Hi there guys, Tom Quayle here. Hope everybody's doing very well indeed as ever. Now, before we dive into this video, I want to say a huge thank you to everybody who's checked out and supported my new app, Solo. Uh, it's been amazing to see the response here. You guys have been absolutely fantastic and we've been riding up in the charts in the uh, music section and the overall section actually of the App Store for quite some time now. To give you a really quick update, we've just released version 1.3 of the app. In fact, we've released a new version every month so far in 2021. And the new version of the app has got some really, really cool features in it. Um, we've got some new bebop scales in the scale trainer. We've got some new pentatonic scales. We've got the blue scale in there, a minus six pentatonic. Um, quite a few different scales. We've got a dominant pentatonic in there as well. And then if you move over to the changes playing trainer, we've got passing chord scale, oh sorry, passing chord scale levels now, where uh, Solo will actually help you to line up all your chord tones on strong beats for uh, any of the chord progressions that are built into the trainer. We've also switched on M1 Mac support. So for you guys who've got an M1 Mac, I've got a MacBook Air behind me. If you've got native Apple Silicon, you can now run the app natively on your um, MacBook Air or MacBook Pro or Mac Mini, which is really, really cool. That was literally as simple as turning on a switch. Um, we verified everything works, so you guys can do that as well. We're also available in more countries now as well. So if you previously couldn't get Solo, check out again, see if you can get it now. Um, we've released in about seven or eight more countries and we're gonna try and release in more as we go. There's some tax issues we've got to get through. Uh, we've got better note calibration now as well and a few other features like some added chord progressions, that kind of thing as well. So check it out guys, go and get the update if you haven't. Now, let me also say, for anybody out there who's using Android, we are actively working on the Android version right now. Please be patient with us. We are not disregarding you guys, I promise. We have one developer who works part-time for our company. So there's three of us in total and only one developer. So we are doing our best to get it out as soon as possible. It's a complex thing to do, but we are absolutely not ignoring you guys, I promise. We will get it out as soon as we can. So with all of that said, guys, let's move on to today's lesson. And this is basically giving you an overview as to how you can get started to master the fretboard. It's a confusing thing. What is the thing that you need to do first in order to develop your fretboard knowledge and get this sort of first rung on the ladder of how you can develop your fretboard knowledge to a really high pro level if you've never thought about this before or you're a beginner or an intermediate player who wants to develop your skills in this area. All right, guys, so let's get into this lesson today. I think one of the most important things as a guitar player when you first start on this journey of really trying to develop solid, manipulable fretboard knowledge is that you have to have a totally intuitive sense or knowledge of where all the notes are, the note names all over the fretboard. Now this sounds super obvious, of course you need to know where the note names are, but, but why do you need that information? You know, a lot of guitar players will learn this in a very kind of loose manner and think they've got this down. So for example, when we first start playing, you locate all of the scales and chords that you've learned. So let's say pentatonic scales or bar chords or you know, modes or major scales um, by their lowest position or lowest note on the E or the A string. So what you'll do is you'll say, let's play a G major bar chord and you'll locate that by this G down here and then play the chord shape. Or you might play an A minor pentatonic and you might play it by locating the A here at the low E string at the fifth fret. And we get very good at being super intuitive with these lowest two strings, but the upper four strings become this kind of soup of sort of knowledge for most guitar players. And then we develop sort of strategies or people show us kind of tricks or strategies we can use to find the notes on those strings kind of quickly, but in no way as intuitively as we know the notes on the lowest two strings. So for example, people will show you octave tricks where you can locate what this note is by knowing that it's an octave above a note that we already know. So we can figure out this is A. And in doing so, you develop sort of a semi-intuitive sense of where the notes are on the fretboard. But realistically, if we're honest with ourselves, a lot of guitar players don't have the same level of intuition as to where the notes are on the fretboard as they would, say for example, to pick something out, you know, out the blue. When I see the word guitar written down on a piece of paper, I know immediately it's the word guitar. I don't have to think about it. It's processed in my brain subconsciously and the information just appears. When you read a book or when you converse with somebody, you don't have to struggle to pluck the words, you know, out of kind of prior knowledge and form them. You, you just intuitively know what they are. Now we need this level of intuition on the guitar 
about our note names in order that we can build upon those note names with further structures. So for example, when I think about the guitar, when I visualize, let's say it's a C major seven arpeggio or a C major scale, whichever, I visualize this on the fretboard by finding or seeing all the C's all over the fretboard. Now, not all at once, of course, but the nearest C to where I am on the fretboard. So if I'm in this position down here, I can find this C at the eighth fret of the low E string. But just as intu it's sort of just as much intuition is uh, is there in terms of finding this C at the fifth fret of the G string, or finding for me this C. This is not a C for you guys, but for me and my tuning, it is at the twelfth fret of the C string. For me, it would be there for you guys. These things have to be so so solid because at any point, once I've found that root note, so let's see here. Let's say at the tenth fret of the D string, I can then start to build the other intervals that make up that particular chord or arpeggio or scale. So from here, this C, I can see the major third. I can see it descending. I can see the fifth. I can see the major seventh. And I can do that from any C, and I can find those Cs immediately, super, super, super fast. It's just like knowing my own name or writing a word down. I don't have to think at all, they're all there. But how do you get to this stage? That's the question, because we've all seen tricks and strategies for, you know, learn the notes, the like YouTube videos, for example, learn the notes on the fretboard in five easy steps. Let me tell you guys that anything that's worth doing is worth doing well and is worth taking time over. Learning the notes on the fretboard is worth A, doing well and B, worth taking your time with. You don't need tricks. You don't need to skip steps. You don't need magic or snake oil here. You just need to put the time in. Now, what I want to show you today is how you can utilize my app solo to help you with this. But I really want to make this next thing really, really, really clear. You do not need solo to do this, okay? You, any, everything I'm about to say, you can do without the app. But the reason I want to show you it with solo is because this will organize your practice and it's a confirmatory practice tool that's gonna to help you to figure out a, what to play and how, you know, which notes to find, and B, confirm when you've got those right. And it's very powerful in that regard uh, to help you out, you know, in terms of your learning process. So this app is not just for advanced players. On first glance, it might seem that way, but it certainly isn't, guys. You can get a lot out of this as a beginner and then develop much, much further with your playing and your visualization as you go through your kind of development process. So again, you do not need it. If you're an Android user and it's not available yet, for example, you don't want to buy solo, you don't need it, but this is really gonna help you out. So anything I'm about to say, again, just fit it to your particular scenario, guys. If you don't have the app, you don't need it, but um, it's gonna, gonna be very, very useful. So what we're gonna do is, before we even get into the app, and this is really fundamental stuff, we're gonna divide the guitar into different zones. Okay, now this is a complex instrument and it's an unintuitive instrument. It's not like the piano where you can learn a note in one octave and it's the same visually in every single octave. C on the piano, because of the way it's arranged, looks the same in every single octave, so it's very easy to locate. But the guitar, a bit of a cliche, but the guitar is like six individual pianos all lined up. Okay, and that's why it's difficult because C on the low E string is at the eighth fret but C on the A string is at the third fret. C on the D string is at the 10th fret, for example. There's no sort of logic to it that immediately jumps out. And this is why you need to put the hard work in. So when I say we're gonna divide the guitar into different zones, what I mean is we're gonna divide into say individual strings. So we could do the E string. We could just do the A string, just do the D string, just the G, just the B, just the E, and work on those individually. We could divide the guitar into just the first 12 frets, for example, on a single string. That would be a zone, or a, these are limitation exercises. We're limiting ourselves to a certain area of the fretboard. We could divide the guitar into two string or pairs of string zones. So we could have the, a, the E and the A string, the low E and the A string, up to the sixth frets. So that would give us all of these notes. So we'd have access to all of those, and that would allow us to complete one octave. We could do three strings, you know, we could do all sorts of different limitations or zoning sort of parameters of the guitar to enable us to work on specific areas of the neck 
in a logical fashion so that we build up our knowledge of these note names in a very, very intuitive way. You have to be very honest with yourself here as to how well you know these. And you should, as I say, you should be able to identify any of these notes immediately in any enharmonic state. So is it a sharp or a flat um, or a natural note? Anywhere on the fretboard, at least within the first 12 frets before you can say that you've really got through this first step. It's super, super important, okay? So, how are we gonna use solo to do this? And again, you don't need solo, but we're gonna utilize it here. What I've done with solo here is I've gone into the changes playing trainer. And in this mode, what you can do is select a series of chord changes and then a level. And the level is gonna select between what we call some intervallic functions within solo. And intervallic functions are things like the root of a chord or the third of a chord or the fifth or the seventh or the ninth, for example. Now this might seem a little bit daunting or confusing at first, but it doesn't need to be because if we go into the changes playing trainer here and go into level, all I'm gonna do initially is just select this first level, root notes. And a root note of a chord, as you probably know, is the named note in the chord. So for C major seven, it's the C. For G minor seven flat five, it's the G. Even for something super complicated like A13 flat nine, it's the A. And solo is going to show you that named note on the screen when we go into what's called the focus view or the workout view. What we've then got to do is select a series of chord changes. So I'm going to go into the chord changes here. And what I'd recommend, guys, you can work through any of these chord changes. It makes no difference at all which set of chord changes you work through. It doesn't matter whether you know the tune or not. It really doesn't matter. But what I'd recommend you start with, if you go all the way to the exercises here, is just start with the first exercise here. Major seven chords, all 12 keys. And the reason we're gonna start with this is it's got all 12 notes in it, okay? Arranged in a certain way. So we're gonna select that. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just tap this repeat button here, and this is gonna cycle round and round the exercise. And then what's gonna happen is when I press start changes workout here, Solo's gonna present us with the first chord, which is A, the triangle means major, and then we've got seven, so A major seven. You do not need to be able to know or play this chord. You don't need any voicings for it. It's, that's not the point of this. The only thing that you're interested in is this A and then the one underneath. What Solo is asking you for is the root note, the one of this chord. And we know that the root note or the one of this chord is the named note, in this case, A. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to try and locate every single note that Solo asks for on the low E string. Now, of course, you could do this without solo, but you're going to have to come up with the material to practice yourself. Well, the beauty of solo is it's telling you what to practice. It's giving you the information. And also it's going to tell you when you've got it right. Because solo is listening to the notes that I'm going to play, and it's going to tell me if I get it right. So it wants me to play an A. And I'm going to just use the low E string to start with. You could pick any string you like, but stick with one string between the, the open string and the 12th fret. And I'm going to try and locate this A. Now there are plenty of apps out there and there are plenty of teachers who will tell you where this A is. Especially lots of apps that will tell you where this A is and they will say, play, you know, the A is at the whatever fret of the whatever string. I would urge you to do the work yourself to work out where this is. Anytime you're going through an educational process like this where you want to retain information, if you do the work yourself as opposed to have someone spoon feed it to you, and this goes for anything that you're learning, you are going to retain that information in a much more intuitive and deeper sense. So this is really, really important. If you don't know where A is on the particular string that you're on, just use your theory, your knowledge of music in order to work it out. So we know that the open string is E, and this is super basic at this point, guys, but it's, it's going to get more complicated as we go through for people who are a bit more intermediate level. So if we start on the low E string, we've got the open E, there's no E sharp, so we go straight to F if we're using sharps. F sharp, G, G sharp, A. A is at the fifth fret, okay? Now if I play any other note, oops. Solo is not interested, okay? It's only listening for the A, and as soon as I play the A, we know it's at the fifth fret of the E string. It recognized the A, and it's now gonna move on to the next chord, which is D major seven. And again, we don't care that it's a major seven chord. All we care about is the D root note and the one. On the same string, I'm gonna try and locate the note D. And again, I can do this either by counting through using my 
knowledge of the chromatic scale or the musical alphabet, to use a very basic term, or I can use the knowledge that I already know. So I know that there's a D at the 10th fret of the E string. It might take you ages to work that out, guys. But look, solo is just waiting for you. It's not, there's no metronome, there's no click like pressuring you to find the note. It takes as long as it takes. And it might take you 30 seconds to work out what this note is, but that 30 seconds is powerful practice. It's teaching you something fundamental about the way the guitar works on a single string. So I'm gonna play the D at the 10th fret. Now again, on the E string, I'm gonna find G. I know that's at the third fret. That might take me 25 seconds to work out if I'm really new to this. If I'm much more advanced, this might take me literally half a second. C, F, B flat. At any point, if I get this wrong, solo's not gonna move on. So I know this must be wrong, as long as I'm in tune, of course. And then I find my B flat only on the E string, E flat, A flat. Again, I'm not interested in the chord type, I'm just interested in finding the named note, the root note in this case. G flat, B, E, I'm gonna use the open E, I could use the 12th fret, A, D, so on and so forth. So we're coming back round. Now, this you can just continue round and round and round and round on this single string, and the faster you get, solo will be able to keep up with you. Now you're moving around, there's a little bit of lateral space to cover. So even if you get pretty quick at this, solo will keep up with you. What you can now do is pretty obvious, just move onto the A string and do exactly the same thing, but don't move on until you're really comfortable with this. And that intuition, you feel that intuition, there's no thinking involved, it's just straight to the note. So that relationship between where the note is and what the note is, is just fundamental within you. So now we move on to the A string. So B, E, A, I'm gonna use the open A, D, G. For you guys with a little bit more music theory, you might notice this is going around the cycle of fifths. C, F, B flat. Let's say I wasn't sure where the B flat was again. I got it wrong. Solo won't move on until you play B flat, E flat. By the way, guys, just really quickly, I'm connected via an audio interface here, but you can use the onboard mic as well to do this exactly the same way, so long as you are in a relatively quiet environment. A flat, D flat, G flat, so on and so forth. Now, at any point, I can move on to the next string, so long as I've done the work and been honest with myself that I'm comfortable now on the A string. You might do an entire week's worth of practice session at the beginning on a single string to get really good at this. Let's move to the D string, so G flat, B, sticking with a single string, E, okay, A, D, so on and so forth. Just get this to the point where it's super intuitive. Then do the G string, the B string, and the E string. What I might then do once I'm really comfortable with that up to the 12th fret on each individual single string is I might take pairs of strings. So I could say I'm gonna do the E and the A string, but only up to the sixth fret on each of those strings. So I'm not allowed to go any higher than the sixth fret. Or I could do six to 12, for example and do the same thing, E and A, six to 12. Or I could do G to B, six to 12, or one to six, or I could do three through to nine, for example. Just enough frets to give me all 12 notes for the chromatic scale, okay? I could do things where I take the three, the first three frets and do all six strings, or the first four frets and do all six strings. There's tons of exercises that you can do, tons of these limitation exercises. Once you get good at these, another thing I might do is I might only travel in one direction. So I might start on the lowest, I've got G here, I might start on the lowest G and say G. Okay, now I'm gonna to have to ascend through the strings. So I'm gonna play every single note. The next note I play is gonna be on the next string up. So C, F, B flat, E flat, A flat. Okay, and then I might move to here and go D flat. Now what I'm gonna do is this time, I'm gonna move through and I'm gonna try and get higher and higher and higher again. So G flat, B, E, A, D, so on and so forth. Now G, I'm gonna start, let's say here, C, F, so on and so forth. Now this is relatively straightforward because it's moving through the cycle of fifths, but at any point you can come in here and change the chord changes to something else. So let's say we change to, it doesn't matter what the tune is guys, just go to countdown here. You don't need to know this tune. It doesn't matter at all. Come in, start the changes, work out. Okay, it's asking me for an E. Don't worry about the minus seven bit, it's just asking me for, Basic information here, where is E? Let's start on the lowest string, E. 
Okay, let's find F on the A string. Let's find B flat on the D string. Let's find D flat on the uh, G string. Let's find G flat and then A. So, so on and so forth. So we'll just play it. Sorry, brain failure. Um, so that's, you know, how I would work with this. Initially, just work with root notes. Select any chord changes you want, guys. It really doesn't matter what it is. Let's do blue and green here. We'll just do the D string. So G. Let's do A. Let's do D. Let's do D flat. Let's do C. F. So on and so forth. B flat. A. You get the idea round and round and round until, you know, basically you're getting this intuition built up in, you know, with your fretboard knowledge where you can see the root, root notes really, really clearly. Now, why is this important outside of just knowing where note names are? Well, once you've got these root notes down and, you know, be creative, think about limitation exercises that you could do to work with this stuff, utilizing solo in this case, you know, utilizing the chord changes, sticking with this one level. If you don't have solo or you don't want to buy solo, again, no problem, do this. You know, you'll have to come up with the information yourself. You could use chord charts, for example, lead sheets or songs that you know. Let's say you know a song um, that's got a particular set of chord changes in, just play the root notes of all of those chords. You know, find a single string, play them on that single string, so on and so forth, until it becomes super, super intuitive. Um, and try not to use these kind of octave cheats or tricks that you might, you know, have under your belt. What you want to do here is really develop that sense of intuition as to where these things are on the fretboard so that it's just second nature to you and you can find them immediately. Once you've got that down, and you feel comfortable that at least within the first 12 frets on each of the six strings, you can find those root notes immediately, super, super comfortably on a good day, let's say. What you can then do is you can come in and choose another level on solo. So you could say, okay, if I come down here, root and third, let's pick that level, root and third. This is like the next step that you would take to develop your fretboard knowledge. What I want to do now is I want to be able to find anywhere on the guitar, again using limitation exercises, where not only the root note is, but the relevant third of the chord. Now again, the beauty of solo here is that it's gonna tell you which third to play. Now we're getting more advanced here because there's some theory involved that you guys will need to know in order to kind of develop some of this stuff, but it's pretty straightforward. It's either gonna ask you to play a natural three, what's otherwise known as a major third, or it's gonna ask you to play a flat three otherwise known as a minor third. Now we use the terminology three and flat three, okay? Now, if you are really stuck on this, solo does actually include, if you come to the tutorial section here, if you go across to the intervallic functions PDF, you do actually include all, you can't really see it very well on the video here because it's too bright, but it does actually include all of the diagrams that show you how to play each of these intervallic functions. So the third or the flat third or any of the other intervallic functions. An intervallic function is just like, is, it, is the note you're playing the third or the fifth or the sixth or the seventh of the chord or the scale or the ninth or the eleventh or whatever? Again, a little bit of music theory involved, but of course, you know, you need the theory in order to be able to do anything on the instrument, um, you know, and visualize on the instrument. So let's say we come in now, let's go back to our major seven chords. So this level here, all 12 keys and start the workout. And now solo is asking me for a one and a three. So the root note, A in this case. Now, if I can't find the root note, I don't stand a cat in hell's chance of finding the three. And this is why this is so important because anytime I visualize the fretboard, at a basic level like this or at a super complex level where I'm visualizing over complex chord changes, wherever I am on the guitar, I'm finding the root note and then in the nearest place, you know, position to where I was previously, that might be this A just here, and then I'm visualizing all the relevant intervals or intervallic functions as I like to call them, or we like to call them, um, around that note. So let's say I've done the work and I know that A is here on the D string at the seventh fret. What I'm then doing is I'm locating the third or the three in relation to this root note. But if I don't know where this root note is immediately, then I've got no chance of locating the third in time and therefore, by the time I actually find that third, the next chord is there immediately. Now this again is why solo is so great, because solo waits for you to find this stuff. There's no click, 
in the background. You can put a metronome on in the background if you want and work to the metronome. But in this case, there's no time-based pressure. You've got all the time in the world to figure out where these notes are by their intervallic function. So we find the root note A. Now I'm gonna find the third, okay? I'm not thinking about the note name. I'm not thinking that it's C sharp. You can do that if you want. I'm doing it visually. I know that the third against A looks like this against the next adjacent string, the G string. I'm not thinking about C sharp. That's why there's no C sharp written here. We don't have note names other than the root note. We want you to locate this by its intervallic function. How does it relate? What's its function against the root note? And in this case, here it is. You notice solo moved on. Here's D, I'm gonna find D. Again, you could do it on the D string if you wanted to. Here, I'm gonna do it at the 12th fret. Solo recognized it, and it's obviously gone gray because it says that you've played it. And again, I'm gonna find the third from here. Now again, this lesson is not about how to find that third, okay? I have lessons on my website about that. There are actually lessons in Solo itself in the tutorial section about how to do that. This is to highlight the importance of being able to find the root note immediately anywhere on the guitar in the nearest position to where you are. So I can work through this entire exercise now. So on and so forth. And I'm doing this by immediately finding the nearest root note to where I was on the guitar for the previous chord, okay? And I'm doing that by having this sense of intuition as to where these notes are. There's no hesitation, I just know where they are, and that's because I've done this work to really understand in a very intuitive sense where the note names are all over the fretboard. Now again, when I'm actually improvising and when I'm doing these exercises in solo or just working on arpeggios, the only note name I actually think of is the root note. When I'm playing a C major seven arpeggio, I think about C, and then I don't worry about what the other note, I know it's an E, a G, and a B, that are the third, the fifth, and the seventh, but I don't think about that, I just think about the visual makeup of those intervals in relation to the root note. So here's the three. I think about them in a generic fashion. There's the five and the seventh. So we've got root and third here for B. If you want to know more about that process, that side of the visualization process, it's the next step on, you can check out the video that I've got linked down below, which is how I visualize the fretboard. And you can also check out my tutorial, the visualizing the fretboard tutorial on my website, which I'll have linked below as well, which goes through this visualization process. But the purpose of this video is to show you how important the root note is and locating that root note immediately in real time having that intuitive sense. And Solo is a fantastic tool for helping you do that. Uh, it's not just a tool for advanced players. This is a tool that can be utilized by beginners even to, to really work on or, or organize your practice time um, and you know your practice material in such a way that you can uh, have tons of material to practice and have that confirmation that you're doing it right and no time-based pressure as well. Solo is not clicking away in the background telling you, come on, come on, come on, you've got to get faster. But if you want to go fast, it can also keep up with you as well, which is super cool. So I hope that's useful, guys. I hope that makes sense. Of course, if you do want to check out Solo, it's available right now on the App Store for iOS devices. It's also, as I mentioned earlier in the video, available for M1 Max now as well. It's coming for Android. Please don't send me death threats or like, you know, emails go, where is it, where is it? I promise it is coming. We're working on it actively right now. Uh, and for anybody who's waiting on an Android device, it will be worth the wait, I promise. Um, but yeah, it's not quite ready yet, but we're getting there. All right, guys, so once again, thanks for watching. I hope you found that useful. I know it's kind of basic, but it's super, super important to have this stuff down in such an intuitive way. I can't stress that enough that it needs to be like talking. It needs to be like reading a book. You don't want to have to think about what words mean you know, unless it's a very complicated word. You don't want to have to think about where root notes are. Uh, they are the foundation for all of your other fretboard visualization, uh, especially if you think in this kind of generic intervallic way that I do. So again, more information on that down below in the video description. Hit the like and subscribe button if you found this useful. And of course, if you are using Solo, please feel free to leave us a rating and a review on the App Store, we would love that. And uh, of course, you can give us feedback on the app. If you go to the settings page just here, you will find there is a uh, send feedback uh, section on there or just drop us an email 
um, and you'll uh, you know be able to uh, maybe get some features added in there that you would like or let us know what you think of the app. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Hit the like and subscribe button, as I mentioned below, and of course, hit that bell notification icon to be notified anytime I upload any more content. And uh, I will see you in the next one. Thanks again, guys. And again, thank you so much for all the support for Solo up to this point. We've been blown away by that and, uh, you know, very grateful indeed. All right, guys, enjoy your practice. See you in the next one.